Hey guys, it's me, <laughs> Corp's husband. It was always me, I've always had a British accent, I've just been faking it. So I've got a bit of a sore throat, which is why my voice sounds like this. I thought it'd be funny to record, <laughs> to record a video. Let's go. Perhaps you are considering purchasing the Canon EOS 77D. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds so strange. Also known as the 9000D or the Canon Rebel T5, also known as the 1200D, but you're uncertain as to whether they're still a good idea to buy in 2023. In this review, we'll discuss their strengths and weaknesses so that you can make an informed decision. First off, let's address which lenses you can use with these cameras. Both Canon cameras can be used with both Canon EF and EFS lenses, giving you a wide range of options for lenses like the Canon EF 50mm f1.8, or the Canon EFS 18-55mm kit lens. You can even consider using third-party lenses, such as the Yongnuo 50mm f1.8, for even more choices. I'll review this lens soon, so make sure to subscribe so that you do not miss that. So, what about storage? Does either of these cameras have a dual SD card slot? Unfortunately, no. Entry-level or mid-level cameras do not have this feature since it is considered high-end. Its purpose is to allow real-time backups of your photos by saving each photo on both cards at the same time. This feature could be useful for professional gigs, as if an SD card fails, you can still recover everything from the second SD card. Although multiple SD cards can reduce the likelihood of SD card failures, theoretically, it is still possible. Moreover, instead of utilizing the backup feature, you have the option to operate both cards independently, thereby increasing your storage potential twofold. So, how are they in terms of connectivity? Does the T5 offer Wi-Fi? Unfortunately, it does not, but the 77D model does have it. Furthermore, Bluetooth is a feature that can only be found on the 77D, not on the T5, as with NFC. Now, is their physical size an issue? The dimensions of the 77D are 131 by 99.9 by 76.2 millimeters, or 5.16 by 3.93 by 3 inches. It has a weight of around 540 grams, which is 19.05 ounces. Alternatively, the T5 measures 129.6 by 99.7 by 77.9 millimeters, or 5.1 by 3.93 by 3.07 inches and its weight is around 480 grams, which is 16.93 ounces. As we can see, these two cameras are evenly matched when it comes to their physical size. However, the lens choice can significantly affect this. In case you want to check out some lenses, I have reviewed a few on my channel. You can find the links below, or click the card in the top right corner. In terms of quality, the 77D boasts a strong build thanks to its use of aluminium alloy and polycarbonate resin. On the other hand, the T5 incorporates carbon fiber, glass fiber, and polycarbonate resin into its build. Expanding on that idea, do they have decent displays? Both cameras come with OK screens on the back that have decent quality. These screens are good enough for navigating through the menus or checking photos. For the 77D, the screen is articulated, which makes it excellent for vlogging. Additionally, its screen can be turned in order to protect it from scratches while in your bag. However, the T5 comes with a fixed screen that cannot be turned or moved. You can also find a small LCD on the top of the 77D, which has some great benefits. This feature lets you quickly and easily check your settings. Although not everyone finds this LCD visually appealing, I enjoy its appearance. Okay, so these cameras are quite versatile. How long will their battery last me? The LPE17 battery on the 77D will last for around 600 shots, while the LPE10 battery on the T5 can give you approximately 500 photos. However, various factors can influence battery lifespan, including screen usage, battery age, and temperature. To be safe, bringing extra batteries with you is recommended, especially when working with a team. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to leave a like. Also, if you're interested in buying any of the items I've mentioned in this review, I have affiliate links below for your convenience. Cool, 
So what should you expect from the 77D and the T5 when it comes to image quality? The type of lens you use determines how your images will turn out. However, for the sake of discussion, let's focus on the camera's impact since I don't know which lens you'll be using. First, let's talk about the sensors. The 77D and the T5 use the same size 223 by 14.9mm APS-C sensor. The 77D sensor provides 242 megapixels, while the T5 sensor offers 18 megapixels. The Digic 7 processor is found in the 77D, while the T5 has the Digic 4. So, what's the difference? Let's take a closer look at what these processors bring to Canon cameras. With the fourth digit generation, faster image processing was achieved in contrast to prior models, noise reduction in high ISO images improved, and H.264 1080p video recording became available. The seventh generation digit processor line brought about significant enhancements, including boosted image processing power, noticeably quicker AF speeds, less image noise, and better subject detection. The ISO range for the 77D spans from 100 to 25,600, which can be extended up to 51,200. Comparatively, the T5 can do 100 to 6400, also expandable to 12,800. Using lower ISO settings to avoid undesired noise in your pictures is preferable. Moving on to autofocus, the 77D has a capacity of up to 45 autofocus points, whereas the T5 only provides 9. On a similar topic, are they equipped with dual pixel AF? So the 77D does have it, while the T5 does not. Having dual pixel AF in addition to a high number of autofocus points usually means significantly better autofocusing capability, which can be incredibly helpful, especially in situations where something's happening and you need to take a photo fast. Expanding on that, what about shutter speed? If you want to capture fast moving subjects, can these cameras do that? Both of these have a maximum shutter speed of 1 4000th of a second, which is nice. Okay, but what if you want to do sports or wildlife photography, and thus you want to take loads of photos in quick succession? In that scenario, what you're looking for is continuous shooting mode. In this mode, the 77D can do 6 FPS, while the T5 can do 3 FPS. In other words, the 77D captures 6 photos within 1 second, while the T5 captures 3. This is incredibly useful if capturing fast motion is what you're after. Within that second, the more frames you can do, the better the likelihood you'll obtain the exact photo you seek. Right, so are these cameras any good for video? The 77D can do 1080p at 60fps, whereas the T5 can only do 1080p at 30fps or 720p at 60fps. Unfortunately, both cameras lack Canon Log. This feature is only available in more expensive cameras as it provides better dynamic range. Now, do either of these cameras have in-body image stabilization? Nope, neither of these cameras has IBIS. Now, most cameras offer digital stabilization, but as a general rule, you should stay away from that. While you're free to experiment with in-body digital IS, it's often not very effective. Moreover, it gets incorporated into the video, so you don't get backup footage. It's generally not worth using it in camera. Instead, you're better off filming shaky footage and using software such as Premiere or any other program you prefer to stabilize it, as improvement in this technology is always ongoing. If you desire optical stabilization, you can consider picking a lens such as the Canon EFS 18-55mm kit lens, ensuring its label includes IS. Having this lens will provide in-lens stabilization, which is considerably superior to in-camera digital stabilization. On my channel, I have reviewed numerous lenses. You can find the playlist link below, or click the card in the upper right corner. Next up, can you use either of these cameras for vlogging? At this point, pretty much any camera can be used for vlogging, but there are a few issues to bear in mind. First off, having a flip screen is ideal so you can see what you're doing when the camera is turned round. While the T5 does not have a flip screen, the 77D does. 
The flip screen can be useful for vlogging and protecting the screen's glass surface. Next up, it's important to understand that both cameras have cropped APS-C sensors that provide a more zoomed-in image than full-frame sensors. Therefore, when selecting a lens, opt for shorter focal lengths. The camera's crop factor may make many lenses too zoomed in for handheld vlogging. A decent and inexpensive choice would be the 18-55mm kit lens, which can be rather wide and allows you to zoom in and out to get more in frame. In most cases, you'll want smoother video, and if you buy a lens with IS, it will provide just that. Alternatively, you can try using the Canon 24mm pancake lens, which is wide enough, but there is no IS included, resulting in shakier footage. If you're planning on setting up your camera on a tripod, then the suggested lenses would greatly differ. Using the 18-55mm lens or the 24mm for this setup is no longer ideal, though they should both still work. Instead, you should consider using something like the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 or f1.8 lenses. Why? Well, these lenses can be opened wider, which allows for more light, and they also produce beautiful bokeh, which is that nice blurry background that everyone likes. However, these two lenses are not ideal for handheld vlogging because they are too zoomed in and don't have IS. Moving on to a related point, how long will the 7070 and T5 last? Neither of them has weather sealing, so you have to be careful about that. I wouldn't use them in the rain or expose them to the elements in that way. Both cameras have a rating of approximately 100,000 actuations. Cameras have a limited number of clicks that they can handle due to their mechanical design. For both cameras, this number is 100,000. Each time you take a photo, a click happens and that's one more actuation counted. Upon performing a bit of quick maths, you'll find that 100,000 photos, assuming an average of 10 photos per day, should last for about 27 years. The camera may develop other problems before that time, and the calculation assumes you're starting with zero photos. However, if purchasing the camera secondhand, the math may need slight adjustments. Before buying the camera, review the listing and check its photo count. So, what are these cameras good for? Both of them are suitable for various photography types, such as portraits, street photography, product photography, landscapes, weddings, events, and documentary work. It is important to note that the lens you choose is more important for these types of photography than the camera itself. When it comes to capturing sports and wildlife photos, though, it's important to consider more than just your lens selection. To get the best results, you'll want a fast shutter speed and a high number of frames per second in continuous mode. For instance, the 77D can take up to 6 FPS in continuous mode and has a maximum shutter speed of 1 4,000th of a second. Meanwhile, the T5 can take up to 3 FPS in continuous mode and has the same maximum shutter speed. I hope this review has been helpful. If you're curious about the cost of these lenses in your area, there are affiliate links down below for your convenience. If you'd like to check out more reviews, you can either look down below for relevant links or click the card in the top right corner. Do you have any questions? Feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.